Welcome to MSL Talk with Tom Caravella, a podcast specifically designed for MSLs and all things field medical. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. You're in for a real treat today because my guest is Ben Newman, who is a peak performance coach, best-selling author. We're talking Wall Street Journal, USA Today of Uncommon Leadership, a tremendous book that I highly recommend. Ben is a top 50 global speaker um, and he is host of The Burn Podcast. So definitely check that out on all places where podcasts are available. We talk about how to be a top performer and excel at the highest levels. Um, This is very near and dear to my heart because Ben is one of my coaches professionally and personally. So I want to share him with you today. He was kind enough and gracious enough to join us on this podcast. Um, So check this out and share it with others. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Ben, welcome to the podcast. How you doing, my friend? Tom, it is awesome. Uh, Hey, as long as we've been talking about this, it is awesome to finally be together on the show. I couldn't be any more excited to be with you and your listeners. And guys, I told you at the intro, I'm going to tell you again, we are so, we are honored and privileged to have Ben here today. This is going to be an amazing, probably one of the best episodes we've ever done. Um, So before we get into that, I want to- Are you setting people up for some giant letdown or what's going on here, Tom? Dude, you know, you (laughs) listen, guys, this guy never lets down. He never lets up and he never lets down. Trust me, by the time we're finished, you guys are going to say, where do I find more of this guy? That's the only thing you're going to be looking for. (laughs) So Ben, do a quick intro on your own, just so that you can tell everybody who you are, where you're from and that sort of thing. Well, first off, I appreciate all of the great things that you decided to say to try to you know, highlight the great stuff that's happened in my life. But the reality is, Tom, and I know it's one of the reasons why you and I connect so well, is life is full of challenge and adversity. And I've been knocked down so many times in my life. You know, I've what a lot of my mentors and coaches, and I still have two coaches. I still read books every day. So whatever Tom tries to tell you about me, I'm far from figuring this out. But I've been knocked down so many times that it's the challenge and adversity that's defined me. And I, I know we'll talk about that. And I find that with most individuals that you meet is that it's the tough stuff that builds your strength. And that's the same for me. It's the times I've been knocked down, but had those individuals who helped pick me up that have helped me understand what what we really can achieve in life when we choose to fight. Mm. And so I've been able to do a lot of things in the world of sports and business. I love every day. I feel like I stopped working a long time ago because every day I want to serve, every day I want to make a difference. And every day I just want to try to be the best that I can be. Well, listen, let's jump into it, man. And let's get into, let's just start with, because the the thing, guys, the thing I love most about Ben is he's known for the burn. And that's become his motto. He lives every day pursuing a legacy and he lives every day with purpose and a plan. And I've learned that from him in addition to some of my other coaches. But every day I hear Ben's voice in my head, literally, and I get texts from him every day. And that's a motivator and it's a reminder. So Ben, let's talk about the burn and how this came about um, and just share with people what it is. So I believe, you know, there's so many speakers and coaches that do the work that I do and they talk about why and they talk about purpose, which are so significant. But I've found in hearing so many individual stories that there's actually this underlying burn. And it's the underlying burn. It's a fire inside of you that actually ignites your why and your purpose on a daily basis that then causes you to be disciplined in your action, especially on the days that you don't want to do it. And to do it on the days that you don't want to do it, I think it takes that burn, which oftentimes that burn, it's it's pain, it's challenge that you've been through. It might be something that you're currently sacrificing for for somebody Or it might be sacrifice that somebody made for you and you tell yourself when you think of their sacrifice, I will not waste a day. And my mother passed far too early in life. She was a single mom fighting to make ends meet, divorced when I was six months old, battled a rare muscle disease. And she taught me what it means to fight. She taught me what it means to show up in life. Tom, my mother was coming to the dinner table with an IV stand when we had 24 hour nursing care in our house when I was a seven year old boy to ask me how my day was at school. 
And even though my mother passed 11 days before my eighth birthday, she had this amazing journal. And in this journal, she wrote, beat the statistics, beat the odds, live with the disease that is chronic and fatal, believe in yourself, combat anything, purpose in life. And exactly. even though even though 11 days before my eighth birthday, she passed time, she taught me what that burn means. And there's a fire inside of me where all I want to do is honor her and continue to write her story every day. And that causes me to fight and to have the perspective, especially on the days that I don't want to do it, that there's more that I can give and we have to choose to take it one day at a time. I love it. And I've heard I've heard you talk about this. Uh, heard you talk. I've seen tears in your eyes talking about your mother and her legacy and and how it ignites that fire in you every day. And that's what makes you special. And that's what keeps you on track. We talk about having a purpose and having a plan. I've never seen anybody that is so intentional and driven like Ben and, and someone that that does such an amazing job coaching others and bringing out their best every single day. But before we get to the plan part of it, I know, Ben, I know there's a lot of people out there that may, they may not be in touch with their burn. They may not know what it is. They may not have even thought about it until now. So can you tell others, what does it take for them to really get in touch with their purpose and their burn? Well, you know, if it's not challenge or adversity like I have faced, which gives a clear example that, okay, when I think about that, I'm not going to waste a day. Mm -hmm. You know, my mother passed at 38, I'm 44. So I can clearly see I've been given six extra years that my mother didn't get. So I'm going to appreciate every single day. So for some, it's when you go through pain, it's very clear. For those of you, I'd encourage you to think about sacrifice. Did mom or dad, you know, make a sacrifice? Are you first generation? Did you immigrate from another country? Some of the, the greatest success stories of individuals I've coached are parents who had great jobs in other countries. They come to the United States. They leave high paying jobs just so their kids could have better opportunity. That sacrifice, when you think of it, you're not going to waste a day. Oftentimes, it's thinking of the little eyes that are in your house that are watching. And you're an example for them, just like my little eyes watched my mom. And sometimes, Tom, I think people forget that there's somebody watching you, whether it's a colleague, a friend, a niece, a nephew, a child, they're watching how you show up. Like we have to be an example if you're the example of what they look to for what success looks like. And if those things don't resonate, this is one of my favorite questions for uncovering the burn. Grab your future and bring it to today. You know, Tom, no, nobody can tell us that they don't want a future. There's nothing that they want. So a lot of times it catches people because the easy thing is I've never heard this. I don't know what my burn is. I don't connect to that. But everybody connects to wanting a future. And I always want people to go deeper emotionally because I'm an emotional guy. You, you mentioned tears in my eyes. I cry when I watch extreme home makeovers. So it's just <laughs> the way that I am. But everybody wants to have a future. So sometimes it's grab your future and bring it to today. Tell me what you want. And that might establish clarity to where even if it's short term, you say, OK, I want this for my life. Well, then if I think about that every day, that's my burn and until I get it. I'm going to think about that when I wake up and I'm going to attack until I've created the discipline to have those things I believe I can have in the future. No doubt. And the alternative, guys, is so many of us are, are going just going through each day through them, going through the motions, just walking through the motions. And maybe life is okay and it's good enough and we settle for mediocrity. This is about living to your fullest potential and finding what version of yourself you want to be. That's what the burn is all about. So Ben, thank you for setting this up. So now what I want to do is take it to the next level. So now that people have an understanding of what their motivation is, what their burn is, what their purpose is, what do you tell them to do next? What happens in order for them to get to that next level, help them start getting towards their dreams, their goals, and start to see things happen in their life? Yeah, I always love asking this question, Tom. How do you show up after you win? That really tells us a lot about ourselves, right? So, Tom, for 30 years, I mean, you've literally created an amazing niche and you've had such an impact in your industry, right? I mean, literally taking executive search in the medical field to a completely different level. You've become this expert. People seek you to speak and coach and do all these things. And now there's, you know, 250,000 listeners, 80 countries, because you decide to show up after you win. Like, though your resume doesn't happen 
because when you win, you decide that, well, I'm just going to go live in my feelings and I'm going to stop working. It's no, you realize you're so committed to the people that you serve, the people that are on your team, that when you win, it's almost this desire, like, I have to keep going, right? There's people who are counting on me. You have children who are serving our country. I mean, there's there's an example that you're setting that doesn't just happen if you choose to not do the work after you win. And so I love asking that question. And I want this to feel like it's one-on-one -on -one coaching for your listeners, right? You don't have to report back to Tom or to me. And I don't want you to feel like I'm calling you out, but I'm being fair because I'm just asking you and I want you to experience it. How do you show up after you win? Because the people who connect to their burn and win at the highest levels, they have a standard, Tom. They don't allow their feelings to dictate how they show up. They identify what it looks like to win one day at a time, and then they choose to live to that standard every day. And even though I've been blessed, and I, I say this very humbly, to win championships at all levels of sports. I mean, I've worked in collegiate football for 10 years, and I've been part of five national championships. And so I've seen it at the highest level, and Super Bowls, and Olympians, and some of the highest performers in business, helping people win trophies in, in boardrooms around the world for Fortune 100 companies. That's not how I define winning. I actually define winning, Tom, in your ability to look yourself in the mirror one day at a time and say, today I gave it my very best. And if you can do that, the byproduct of that is winning at very high levels. But to do that, you have to determine, here's my standard. Here's what I have to do personally. Here's what I have to do professionally. Here's what I have to do that's of service to others every day. And then when I do it and I win, it's stacking those days on top of each other, regardless of how big the results and the wins get. You just keep showing up one day at a time to the standard. Guys, I'm going to tell you something right now. This is this could be the most powerful moment of your life. And the reason I say that is because Ben has made such a pr profound effect on me in my life. So let me unpack that for a second. It starts with defining your burn. What's your purpose? Then you have to establish the standard, the plan that you wish to live by. And uh, getting back to this reaching your full potential how you decide to show up after you win is where you set the bar, where the standard is set. Now, the other thing that Ben said that's really important is there's going to be days you don't feel like doing it. So he talks about standard standards over feelings, meaning when you don't feel like it, you still do it because that's the standard that you set for yourself. So Ben, I'm going to go to the next phase here because life's tough. We get adversity. There are curveballs. We get sick, something happens, we get down, whatever the case may be. How do you stay so consistent and what habits have you developed so that you can show up every single day, day in, day after out? You know, so there, there's six mental training tools that we use in our coaching work. And I've been doing this work for 17 years. And so if you go all the way back to when I first started coaching and speaking, there are these tools that we developed that have now become part of your mental toughness playbook, which has over a million downloads uh, or purchases of, of that book. And these are tools. They haven't changed, Tom, because the recipe for success often doesn't change. And that's what people get frustrated with. It's like, you mean to tell me I got to keep doing the same things over and over again? And one of the pieces that I found that just works not just for me, but for others. And there's story after story I could tell is what I call the power to reframe. And that's one of the six mental training tools. It's our ability to focus on solutions rather than problems when we face adversity. Now, I'm not saying I want you to live in la-la land and pretend like bad things don't happen. But most of the time, if something bad happens and it's out of our control, why would we spend unnecessary time focusing on something that's already happened that we cannot change? And so the power to reframe reminds us when you face challenge and adversity, experience the emotion for about 60 or 90 seconds. And then say to yourself, what's a positive action step that I can take to get up off this mat of life? And it's one of those things, Tom, that I just, I have to do it all the time. I have to do it as a father. I have to do it as a husband. I have to do it as an entrepreneur. It, it, it's a constant fight in life because it's never easy. But when you rewire your brain to focus on those solutions rather than the problems and, and you utilize the power to reframe, 
it will change how you show up through adversity and it'll change your life and your future. No doubt. No doubt. I see it in my own life. This stuff works for me. And that's why I couldn't wait to have you come on. And Ben, keep in mind, we are in looking at thinking about the audience, thinking about the people that are listening to this podcast right now, folks that are in their professional life, looking to establish themselves in their careers, maybe get a new job, maybe position themselves for a promotion. What advice do you have for those people to help them to stand out, stand out from the other people interviewing for that same position, stand out for that promotion, or maybe just stand out so that they can get the exceeds performance on their next evaluation? What advice do you have for those guys? So when I first started working at the University of Alabama, when Coach Saban hired me in 2017, so I, I had the blessing of working for five years, two national championships in Alabama. And Tom, I know what high expectation looks like. <laughs> Day one on the job, like you walk in for that interview, there's an expectation that you feel when you walk into that Malmore Athletic Complex that like you better be on your game. And you know what I realized, Tom? I realized that feeling that I had, which created a standard, which created expectations, which caused you to show up a certain way. Now, I've always been focused. I've always been intentional. I've always been living to this standard and wanting to fight to be my best. But when you walk into Alabama, it was elevated. And when I walked out that first time, I said, Tom, the way I'm turned up right now, my, my level of focus, how it actually increased beyond everything, I've, why wouldn't I show up that way no matter where I am? So it wasn't just Alabama. It was every speaking opportunity, every coaching opportunity. And so what it made me realize was you're going through an interview every day. Every day is an interview. So if you want the promotion, then you have to show up every day with intentional focus as if you're going through a job interview to get the job. The people who fall off of the disciplines are the people who become content. They become comfortable. And if there's somebody that you're competing against in your job that's not comfortable, that understands high expectation, that understands the standard, and you're not showing up to be your best every day, they're going to beat you out for that promotion. And so it's a constant showing up to be your best one day at a time, almost treating it like it's a job interview. And, and even for me, when I go give a speech, like what am I going to go halfway of what I thought would be a really good speech to impact the people in the audience? No, like that individual I'm with, not only do I want to deliver for them, that might be my next referral to Tom's company to go give a speech at his event. So you're always in an opportunity to be your best. It's almost like every day is a job opportunity. So don't wait to go all in when you want the promotion. Go all in every day and they may just start seeking you. I love that. You cannot lose if you have that mindset. So if you, if every day is like an interview, you're always, everybody's their best when they show up for that interview. That's the honeymoon phase of your job. You're your best. You're the most prepared, you've practiced, and you have the most desire. So if you take that into every day, I love this, Ben. I think it's one of the best things anyone's ever said on this podcast, because if you have that philosophy, then you'll never let your guard down. So let's take this an, another step when we look at individuals. Now, guys, keep in mind, like coaches will call Ben to come to the Super Bowl to speak to like he got a call from the Philadelphia Eagles that said, hey, we need you to come to the Super Bowl next week to speak to the team. That's the caliber we're talking about here. So, Ben, when you're about to get out and coach and speak to the Philadelphia Eagles, the you know, Alabama Crimson Tide, and these guys are at the tip top top of their game, these top performers, what are the traits and attributes that you see at the highest levels when you're speaking to these guys and how can that translate for our audience today, listening to this show, when they're trying to develop the skills that they may need to take them to the next level. So one of the things that I, I share with athletes as well as individuals in business is what you do today <clears throat> manufactures everything that you're going to achieve in the future. So I remember conversations I had with some of the Eagles during training camp in Miami. It was a joint training camp with the Dolphins and the Eagles and one of their coaches that I'm very, very close with that I've worked with for years. 
And I remember conversations around what they were going to do every day to give themselves an opportunity to compete in the Super Bowl. So they were planning for a Super Bowl all the way back in training camp, but they showed up every day to do it, which further supports what I've shared up until this point. And there are so many people who they tell you how great they want to be, but then we have a conversation with their action and we find out how bad they really want it. You take the Kansas City Chiefs or the Philadelphia Eagles, we go back and look at their daily action through the course of the season. Both of those teams wanted to play in the Super Bowl, and that's why they did. So once you get to that pivotal moment, once you get to your big moment, your big opportunity, your big close, your big your big next movement for you and whatever it is that you do in your life, the conversation we have then is eliminate the distractions. You've got to silence the noise. Media says silence the noise. And then you have to continue to prepare so that when those 60 minutes go on the clock to play this football game, that you can lock in and play one play at a time for six seconds of play, because that's how you got here. And so typically in those big moments when the teams fall short, it's because they were distracted. They were paying attention to the noise. They allowed the stress of the situation to get a hold of them. That was one of the best Super Bowls we've seen in a long time. So both of those teams were prepared to lock in and play the entire game and fight, which was really awesome to see. But that's typically what it comes down to, Tom, is helping them remember, you've already put in the work. So let's actually focus on the mindset, the focus that it's going to take, and maybe finding your edge in the details. Can we get into game film to find that little bit extra that if you do that, you'll explode, you're ex you will exploit your opponent's weaknesses, and you'll be able to take advantage of the opportunity. Same in business, right? So you probably need to find just a little bit extra that if I do this, it might be that edge that I need to win that opportunity or to close that piece of business. And, you know, guys, if you think about it, each one of us has our own Super Bowl that we're preparing for. Something in our lives, again, maybe it's a promotion, maybe it's a job that we're looking to achieve, looking to get, maybe we're trying to get top performer status, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. Whatever your Super Bowl is, apply this stuff. It, The same rules apply, whether you're a professional athlete playing for the Philadelphia Eagles or Kansas City Chiefs, or whether you play for the Alabama Tide Crimson football team. It. It's this, the same principles apply. Don't you agree, Ben? It doesn't matter. You don't have to be preparing for a Super Bowl because you have your own Super Bowl. It, whether it's my work with Alabama, Kansas State, Michigan State, these NFL teams, Olympians, Microsoft, pick a company. It, it's all the same. And, you know, at the end of the day, we have to choose to evaluate what it takes for us to win and then choose to do those things after we win and that goes back to what you mentioned earlier i've been talking about standard over feelings for years and sometimes it's the negative thing that happened yesterday that you choose to bring into today to not do what you need to do or it's the big victory that you had yesterday where you say don't you see what i did yesterday why do i need to work today and it's like well the reason why you did that yesterday was because of something you did like three months ago or six months ago so you might as well do something today if you ever want to experience that feeling of that win from yesterday in the future. You know, a lot of this stuff, it's simple, Tom. This, these aren't like earth shattering ideas. These are just things that oftentimes we overlook when we allow that emotion to dictate our next behavior. And that's it, guys. That's it right there. Every single day you have a choice as to what you're going to do, how you're going to show up. Are you going to stick to your plan? You're going to stick to your standard standards, or are you going to let the excuses of life get in your way from keeping you from being your best? And one thing that I've learned from Ben is if you show up and you're your very best every single day, when you put your head to the pillow at night, you could rest easy knowing that you gave it your very best. You'll achieve at the highest levels if you know that every single day you gave it your very best. Ben, I'm going to give you, we have to kind of close up here. I know your time's valuable. Um, last piece of advice for folks listening today, anything at all that you want to say to these guys to help them out? So you, you just pulled a very powerful word that I've said a handful of times in our time together today, and it's choice. And the greatest life lesson I've ever learned, I learned from my mom. It's not how long you live, it's how you choose to live your life. 
And, you know, for me, because of watching my mother battle amyloidosis, I choose to embrace every day as an opportunity to win. And I just encourage you define what your burn is, connect to that burn every day, and then choose to do what it takes to win one day at a time. You stack those days on top of each other, you will write one hell of a story. There you go, guys. Hey, if you guys got value of this, please share it. I told you Ben was going to be awesome. Listen to it again. Share it with your friends. Um, I just want to say before we close out, Ben, I am incredibly grateful to have you in my life. I want to thank you for everything that you've taught me, everything that you shared with the listeners today. I love you like a brother. Uh, I appreciate you. And thank you for spending time with us today. I love you, brother. I appreciate your example and appreciate the invite to spend time with all your listeners as well today. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to the show. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe so that you don't miss episodes in the future and feel free to leave a rating or a review or a comment. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.